Hey y'all, it's Emily with Hardy Soul. Welcome back to our channel. Today we are headed out to Wisconsin to talk with a good friend of mine, Chris Peterson, also known to some of you as the Parenting Professor. You notice that woodpecker earlier? Yeah, we used to have a pileated woodpecker. Have you ever had one of those? Yeah, quite often. <clears throat> but um, incredible. they are. There's a lot of pileated activity around here because of the emerald ash borer. Oh, I suppose. And they're really um, opportunistic. That would be the biggest word I'll use today. It's only Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Tuesday, opportunistic. It's this coffee. Shameless plug for Oma. They do such a good job. Their mission is really cool. It's really tasty. I was working on um, what the kids call merch. Merch? Merch. You were working on some merch? Yeah. I had a coupon. I put my mission statement on there. Oh, there you go. You know what? Say it out loud. It's, um... Say it out loud. Say it! <laughs> Say it! It is influencing the development of the next generation's world-class citizens because that's all we can do is influence so I, I chose that word pretty carefully kind can't like create opportunistic. kind of like opportunistic <clears throat> you just can't create the best parent the best teacher there's no guarantees because kids have free will we can influence we can create an environment where it's kind of a no-brainer to do right, to do good, to be healthy, but no guarantee. It's not a full-blown farm like you guys have, but we get to do some quote-unquote farm work, you know, and I think that that's important. Without the pressure. Zero pressure, <laughs> yep, zero pressure. I don't know. We've been talking about like chores, right? Yeah. Why don't we? Why don't we call them chores? I, don't I grew like up chores. with chores. Did you grow up with chores? Yep. Huh. We had chores. You had chores. Because we had. You we were a farm girl. We had barn chores. Yeah. We had chores. We See, had... I I grew up kind of in the woods. See those pesky blue jays over there? Um, chores are important. One of the reasons we moved out of town was there's more opportunity to do work. Why is work important? for kids. Makes them feel needed. Part of a team. Part of a team. My grandma was so good at that. I was about uh, 10, I think. And I remember going to my mom or dad and I'm like, is grandma okay? And she's like, well, why? What's going on? I'm like, she can't do anything without me. <laughs> she, she, cause grandma would be like, oh, Christopher, thank you so much. Whether we're changing oil in the lawnmower or planting potatoes or cleaning fish or, you know, I used to help her make quilts that she would sell at the yard sale. And every everything was, thank you. I, just, I couldn't have done it without you. And in hindsight, I didn't hear a lot of good jobs, mm -hmm. way to go, that's awesome, you rock. Here's a sticker. Here's a sticker. And you know, <clears throat> once in a while, those things aren't detrimental. Right. They're not gonna kill a kid. Right. But when they become, what, habit? Right. Or that empty praise after about the age of three, if, if a child has a steady diet of that, it's pretty much meaningless. Right. Oh, I completely agree. That's crazy. So we talk about being genuine with the words we use, and in class we talk a lot about noticing. Mm -hmm. Right? I noticed you've been coloring for 20 minutes. And that's it. Yeah, and let it go. And if they want to talk more, of course. Let but that's it. hard to do. It is so hard. When I first started teaching, I think I've told you this story, I was the king as a PE teacher. I was like the king of, that's awesome, way to go, you rock. 
Um, because that's kind of how I was coached, you know, and a lot of in physical education, there's kind of a coaching aspect to it, I guess. But um, I learned we can be better with our words, right? And we can have a greater impact and kind of being lazy. I, I wanted to be as efficient as I could. Like, I'm going to write this book called The Effective Lazy Dad. <laughs> like, parenting from the Barca lounger or something like that. We should call this Ruminations in the Red Chair. That's a great title. Is it? Ruminations? Yeah. Do you know what ruminate means? Isn't that like what cows do with their cud? Yeah. They ruminate on it? Chew it up, yeah. spit it out, yeah. and chew it back up again. Yeah. Mm. It is gross. It is gross. So... We, what were we talking about? <laughs> Do you remember? Yeah. Good job. You know, the only Way to go. The only time we use good job in our house is when somebody poops in the potty for the first time. Way to go. Because not only are they proud of their job, but I want them to know that I appreciate the work that mm. they're doing. As makes your life easier. Makes my life easier. And with schoolwork and anything else, it's not mine. Like oh, it's, it's theirs. Good it's point. It's theirs, you know. So I want them to have the good, the bad, the ugly. But when it comes to pooping in the potty, it's good for everyone. That's that should be a bumper sticker. Pooping in the potty, it's good, good for, for everyone. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so what I was saying was, I I was videotaping myself in the gym, in the in my gym, and then in the classroom, knowing that I was looking for episodes of Empty Praise. And I still, I remember doing this lesson with first graders, might have been kindergartners, on, on types of movement, you know, like moving tall, moving short, moving quiet, moving like an elephant. And in a 30 minute lesson, knowing that I'm looking for these episodes, how many just episodes of Way to Go, You Rock, That's Awesome, those are my top three. 20. 68 in 30 minutes. And I knew I was trying to cut back. So then I'm, I started, you know, getting more into being authentic with praise, and um, and I used a really technologically advanced method to break the habit. Do you want to hear what it was? Yeah. Sticky notes. Where did you put the post? Oh my god! Everywhere. Clipboard, gym, light switch, and so what I wanted to do was notice and describe, and that's what we talk about in Love and Logic. Notice, right? I noticed you got those first three problems correct. And then I like asking the question, and, and this isn't my stuff. This is Love and Logic Institute, Jim and, and Dr. Charles Fay. But then we ask, how, how did you do that? And most kids will do what? And then I like to give them just a couple of options. Did you get lucky? Especially if I have a good rapport with the child. I'll just, I'm like, oh, did you get lucky? And they'll kind of look at you. It's kind of fun. And when I substitute now, substitute teach, I, I do this all the time. It just, it, it, it just proves to me that this philosophy of working with kids is good. Yeah. It makes sense. You know, once it becomes part of your language mm -hmm. and who you are, <clears throat> it's so easy. It's a little more automatic. It's, it's yeah. just, it's, uh, it's pretty hands off. It's, you know, less is more. You know? I had a problem though, just last week, kid was so used to being able to push adults' buttons. And he was trying to push with me, and I could feel like I, I was getting hot. And I'm like, oh, oh no. <laughs> and I looked at the kid next to him, it was at lunch. So this kid is like, you know, posturing in front of his buddies. Sixth grade boy, and every label under the planet, and he, he wears them with dignity. And I don't know that they're all true. You know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think some of them are just like, we gotta slap a label on this kid because he's naughty. He's posturing and all of a sudden he gets in my face and he's like, he just meows at me. And I'm like, he's like, what? And I'm like, um, I, we'll take care of that later. <laughs> and I smiled at him and he's like, meow. And I'm like, we'll take care of that one later too. Not to worry, try not to worry about it. And I turned around and I walked away. I'm like, what the heck? I've never had a kid like aggressively meow at me. In your face. In my face. And then all of his buddies laughed. I think the old part of me would have been like, you know, you can't talk to me like that. Come to the office, sit over here, separate them. But that looks dumb too, right? Yeah. Like out of control. 
Right. So I just smiled and I said, yeah, we'll take care of that later. Not to and worry. That, I mean, like a perfect example of modeling, self-control. Oh, staying calm. And staying calm. Yeah. And I'm cool and I can handle this. Yeah. Even, even aggressive meowing. <laughs> Like, if I was going to choose an animal sound, it wouldn't be a kitty cat. <laughs> if I'm going to show aggression, like a dog or even a horse. What would happen if you barked back <laughs> and walked away? Well, that would have been a fun experiment. Actually, going back to that kid that meowed at me last fall. I think it was one of the first math tests they took. And he got the test, got the test back. And he left it at a spot while he was going on a trip. He's a wanderer. And partly because the adults let them. And I just flipped it over and I'm like, huh. And this is really my first interactions with him was last September. I'm like, he got too wrong on this sixth grade non-adjusted math test. So I took him through that process. Hey, Charlie, um, I, I noticed you did good on this test. He's like, Psh, right? I'm like, did you get lucky or were, were you working hard? He's like, I didn't get lucky. I studied for that one. And I'm like, oh. Working hard. Like that was so out of his norm. Mm -hmm. Somebody cared. Because a lot of times, oh, way to go. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. You must be so, I'm so proud of you. But that's really, we got off on this tangent because you talked about jo jobs, chores, or, you know, we like to call them contributions to the family. Right? And you said it helps people feel good. Mm -hmm. I had a mom po post a picture from the last class we took in Winona. And she's like, our first, our first stab at contributions in the morning before school. And the look on this kid's face is just like extreme focus. I imagine his thought bubble was, mom, I got this. Yeah. And he, you could just, through a picture. Sure. You know? And I was thinking about pictures today. And a lot of times, you know, we have pictures on our phone or we download them to the computer or whatever. And when we scroll through them sometimes, just as a family, it's not the, I don't think I've ever talked to you about this. It's not the posed pictures, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or the, the, the ones that are being captured for on purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the ones that are candid that get the longest stares and the most discussions. Sure. And I found out it's the ones where, because my girls are now 13 and 10, when they were little and, and they have bandanas on because they're cleaning the mirror in yeah. the bathroom, standing on the counter. Those little things that I captured quick, those are the ones that they'll talk about and giggle. Oh, remember when we used right. to have to... And it may not have been a great shot. It no, be, none of them are. Blurry. Right, right. But those are the ones that get... <clears throat> that they feel the... It's not... Nothing against standing in front of the Christmas tree with the scarf and, and the pose pictures. Those are fun to do. Yeah. But it's those candid ones with kids working mm -hmm. that I've just noticed. Huh. Try this at home. You have some. Yeah. And, and just... I mean, if you wanted to be really like a sciencey geek about it, time it. Watch, just let sure. them scroll through. It, and I promise it's the ones where they're picking out eggs. Yeah. Or they're skinning sheep. Yeah. Your kids do crazy stuff, right? <laughs> they're like tanning their own leather to make their own moccasins. <laughs> and they're they're <laughs> they're growing corn. So. <laughs> They all got slingshots for Christmas. Yeah. Are you hot? Do I look warm? No. no. But I'm hot. Can I turn? Can I go outside? Can I put the fireplace out? Yeah. You need to get the water pitcher. Water pitcher. Speaking of that, we've been watching a ton of Little House in the Prairie. Oh, isn't that great? I love it. Pa. Oh my gosh, poor Pa. He's so close to being successful, and then he loses a crop. Thank you for not bailing me out. That's the message almost every time. Thanks for not bailing me out. Mm -hmm. That's a strong tenant in Love and Logic, not helicopter. Right. Yeah. We're covering a ton of stuff. Can you tell I just wrapped up the class? I can. When does yours start? Last Monday in February, we'll have a class in St. Charles. Minnesota. Minnesota. So the class is just $20 a Digital. person. For 12 hours of world-class research-based training. Right. More turkeys. We've been talking a lot about milk lately. And dolls. And dolls, yeah. The Those dolls, dolls are freaky until they're done. 
They're yeah, a little scary. They are. Well, and when I have to talk about describing making one, it's like, you know, put the long needle through the eye hole. Yeah. Grab the neck and pull it through with your hemostat. <laughs> it's not, you know, it's not. Do you like, put like, remember cabbage patch dolls? And yeah. they had like little dimples on their butts? Well, do you I think put butt dimples? You could. Belly buttons. Belly buttons. Yeah, we could do belly buttons. We could do a blog on. Well, it's not. Oh, this morning. Almost earned five dollars. Really? All of a sudden, because I saw the bus coming. I know some parents that let the kids ride the big yellow thing for free. But if they're dawdling or they miss the bus, they it, they'll take them to school because they don't want to break the law. Right. But it's a chauffeur trip is five dollars. Mm -hmm. We had to do that once. We almost did it today. I mean, this person almost had to do it today. <laughs> we did it once, and our oldest was in kindergarten. It was the third day of school. Oh, no. And I still get flack because, From oh, who? how could you do that? Ah. That is so mean. Yeah. It was in a loving way. Empathy? Empathy, and she was, she knew it. We had been practicing. And so you pra like that's crazy concept. You didn't just throw her out to the wolves and be like, someday, one day, out of the blue, this big yellow thing's gonna come, and oh, yeah. you better be ready. We won't know when, or but you practice. We practice. So like the weekend before school started, and even maybe two weekends before school started, we just asked a lot of questions. Like, all right, this is kind of when you get up. What do you need to do now? Oh, I think I need to get my clothes on. Yeah. You need to get your clothes on. What's next? Mm -hmm. I think maybe I should get something to eat. Great. Remember where we get the eggs in the morning? Mm -hmm. Get the eggs and then we can make some Put breakfast. on your homemade boots. <laughs> Sheepskin boots. I think it's, I, I'm not, I'm jealous, really. So they go get breakfast. Then what's next? You know, so we go through the practice before we're under pressure. Right. Right. And she made it to the bus beautifully for first two days. And we had talked all through this whole time, like, what happens if you don't make the bus? Sure. It's just a $5 ride. And I think if you talk to Is yours $5 too? Yeah, it is. Well, we're in the same market, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. It is. And, you know, if you talk really nice to dad, maybe he'd be able to take some time out of his busy morning to take you to school. It's just $5. Um, and boy, that day, were we counting quarters that oh, morning? Oh, gosh. Yeah, we had to come down to pennies. But why is that Why is that not abusive? It's in a loving way. And you know what? Every single child after her has always gotten on the bus. Because <laughs> they were all watching and how, her. And she made it, she did it one time. She did it one, one time. time. And she is like That's a mother crazy. hen to her siblings. Oh, sure. Because she doesn't want to have to put anybody else out in that situation. Right, right. You remember what happened to me when I was in kindergarten? <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, some people wait till high school to do this. I know. Right? So the soundbite is we the road to wisdom is paved with countless mistakes when the costs are small. Right. Yeah, I never That's hard. forget when Jim said that he went to prayer to hope that Charlie would make as many mistakes as possible when yeah. he was young. Mm -hmm. Went to prayer. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, let this kid act up just as much as he can. Yeah. He's gonna need lots of mistakes. Right. Well, and, and that's interesting to think about because, as in your daughter, she only had to make that mistake once. Probably for the rest of her schooling. We'll see. Yeah. This was a big conversation I had last summer. We were laying out in the grass. One, the oldest one said, um, you know, we're really lucky. And I'm like, yeah, tell me about that. She said, well, I just like being out here. It's a perfect spot. I love our house, our family. We have chickens and a crick and a dog. And... And I'm like, yeah, very lucky. Um, but it took a lot of work to get to this spot, you know? Mm -hmm. I remember when we were first married, it was subsidized housing by the railroad tracks and no TV. And, and I said, um, do you worry that whether you're living in a nice house on a hill or a box under the bridge that will love you differently? I'll get emotional about this. <laughs> and she said, no. If you live in a castle or a box, our love for you won't change. She's like, I know. And that concept of loving unconditionally is so important. Now, 
not for what kids do or what they produce, but because they are them. And it's easy to lose focus on that. Oh, yeah. This is a fast-paced world. Oh, yeah. Driven, got to perform. And then I kind of got lighthearted at the end. I don't know if you could imagine that for me. No. She, no, no. I go, now, just so you know, I'll visit you in the, in the castle. And I'll visit you in the box under the bridge. But I'm not staying overnight in the box. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, yeah! Unless I have my own box. She's like, unless I have my own box. BYOB. BYOB. Bring your own box. Yeah. Are you going to write a book? Me? People keep asking me. I'm real good at screaming. Yeah. But I mean, before Love and Logic? Yeah. Is it I, different in your house? I mean, we have had Love and Logic in our household since our oldest was two. Oh. And I remember coming home from the first class, we learned about the OO song. It was a little over the top the first time I did it. Because, like, <laughs> anything she did wrong, I was like, let's correct this right away. Sure. But we got good at it, and then we made a lot more mistakes, and then we, you know, take another class, and yeah. we practice some more. Yeah. And, and now you teach the class. And now I teach the class Facilitate. so that I can be an even better parent. I was telling that story, actually, at the last class. And I, I had said, if you, if you can't wait for, because I, I think we're going to do another one, it sounds like. Um, take Emily's. I said, you know, it, it won't be quite as good, but you can take it and just see. Yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> and and uh, she and and I kind of told the the cliff note version of how you got to where you got oh, sure. from my perspective. And and I remember just kind of being like, why don't you just teach us? Because obviously you're really into this. Yeah. And I kind of get lost in the lessons because maybe it's something I need to work on at home. And I'll Isn't be like, that true? Oh, wait a minute. I got to get up. I got somebody who's teaching this class. We're, yeah, you're the me. one. You're the one that's, they're staring at. No, I learn just as much from my students as they are learning from the class. Have you heard this? I've heard this, especially from dads. This is way different than I expected. Mm -hmm. So tell me more about that. Well, it's, it's fun. Right? We laugh a ton. Yeah. Have a lot of fun. Um, and then I always hear some version of this. It helped me realize, like, I'm not a crummy parent. Right. And that everyone is having very similar issues. Including the instructors. Including the instructors. I teach, and I joke, but it's so true. I teach it because I'm a slow, slow learner. Yeah. Because, you know, 28, let's say it's 30 times, I still pick up little nuances. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I know that when my stress level is high, I, I find myself shifting back towards drill sergeant parenting, mm -hmm. right? I just feel like, I feel this coming out, like, what did I say? Mm -hmm. And you know what I found out too, after knowing about Love and Logic for 10 years now? Um, Has it been that long? It's been that long. So when, when you have a relationship with your kids, that is surrounded by love and logic. The instance that you need to be in an emergency sort of, sort of situation, it's received in a whole different way. Because it's not typical, we, right? Right, then yeah. if we use it every single time we talk to a child. So if I need to say, hey, wait, stop, don't cross there, my voice sounds a lot different than it does every other day. Mm -hmm. And they're like, whoa, That's mom's serious. serious. Right. Yeah. When it's life or limb, we step in. Right. Oh. Yeah. Or they're like, uh -huh. like the what? I'm like, Let me. when you have role models like Jed Hafer and Dr. Fay and Jim Fay, and you know, when in doubt, I just whatever they say. Sometimes I try to say. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a question from one of my students, and I know it's one that we've talked about before. It sounds it's, big. So. Regarding snacks and sugar. Oh. So sugar can be compared to heroin to kids sometimes because the more you have, the more you want. It can be an addictive substance. It's yeah. an addictive substance, right? <clears throat> so I had a parent who said, okay, we need to be done with the sugar. So they took sweets out of yep. the household yep. and said, okay, we just need to be done with this. They were noticing a problem, mm -hmm. right? We mm -hmm. say, if there's a problem, we need to take care of that problem. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And I know we've talked about moderation, and the more you say no to something, the more they're going to want it, and that's exactly what happened in this case. It's so like screen time, too. Right? Yeah. Okay. So after we took the sugar out of the household, 
the kids were doing anything to find the sugar. So, um, making themselves a plate of syrup, for instance. Oh, sure. Or finding the marshmallows and the chocolate chips in the baking cupboard. Yeah. Or anything to find a granule of sugar. You know, so we talk like, okay, do we need more moderation of the sugar? Uh, is it wrong to take the sugar completely out? Do we need to remove the baking items? You know, like, mm. it's tough and... It reminds me of like our prison system, right? Oh, county jail didn't work, we'll send you to the state penitentiary. Well, that didn't work, well, we'll send you to a federal prison. Well, that didn't work, we're gonna put you on a rock in the Bay of California. Yeah. Well, that didn't work, you know, so... I, being restrictive, being hyper restrictive, I would imagine there's a time for that. You didn't really ask me a question, so I'm not, I don't have to talk. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> what would you do? Oh shoot! If there was a sugar problem in your household, and if if your kids were I taking would, advantage yeah. of the fact that there's sugar in your household, I would question: is is there a sugar problem? Or is it a behavior problem? What if you took away all the vegetables? Would the kids start smuggling like baby carrots home from school? I'd imagine there's some grain of, well, they can't, they said I can't have it, so I'm gonna. I'm really gonna want I'm it. I'm really gonna want it. I like phrases like, be reasonable. Our oldest is like, can I have some ice cream? Yeah. And she knows that if she asks, it's almost always yes. Right. But being sneaky is not a great way to, to work around here. You know, then we'll have to do something about, it's about being sneaky. sneaky, right? So that's maybe where I would go with this, is it's it's more of a trust issue than eating sugar. So she went to get a scoop of ice cream. I think she put some nuts on it. I'm like, well, that's a little healthier. <laughs> you know, but I mean, like, it was reasonable. It wasn't a big bowl with a bunch of other stuff on it. What would you do if it was? Oh, I'll try again, sweetie. Thanks. I'm like, do you want to ask your sister if she wants some? Do you want some ice cream? I didn't eat very much for supper, so probably not. Is that a weird thing for a 10-year-old to say? Yep. But here's the umbrella phrase that I use. Girls, you're in charge of what goes in your body. Our job is to influence, going back to what we originally started with, Right. and create an environment where it's just as easy to go into the fridge. If you go into our fridge right now, there's a big bowl, Tupperware, with no lid on it, with water, carrots, and celery. They never have to ask about that. In the drawer, there's apples and oranges. There's washed grapes. There's um, some yogurt. There's some string cheese. There's some other healthier, with this concept that you're in control of what goes into your body. That's just like your education is your education. Mm -hmm. Your nutrition is your nutrition. What sticks, you know, stays between your ears, what you learn, that's up to you. Um, your emotions are yours. Um, and I think, I think just generally, if we, if we really pull back and restrict, it'll backfire. Mm -hmm. so food is weird. Food is tough for people. Restricting food, go back to enforceable statements. Kiddos, we've noticed that there's been a lot of like sweets. Keep it really simple, right? A lot of sweets eaten lately, and um, we just need to kind of be control that a little bit more, right? I, I like the phrase self-regulation, right. that concept, you know? So let's be reasonable. Right. Let's self-regulate. If it turns into two hours, that's the problem. I'll have to do something. Right. If that one scoop turns into four, we'll have to, we'll have to talk about that, you know? The lesson is no doesn't mean no. The lesson is no means I just need to be sneaky about it. That scares me a little bit. You can find me on Facebook, The Parenting Professor. I have a webpage, theparentingprofessor.com. Party Soul, tell us about that. We're talking a lot about milk lately and getting it to people who need it. Yeah, that's a cool thing. It's hard to get it to the people who need it fast enough before it doesn't taste good anymore. And as dairy producers, it's a concern of ours because we want people to experience the fresh product so that they want to consume and purchase more of the fresh product and not get a bad taste in their mouth. So we're working on some... Literally. Literally. Mm -hmm. I saw a link One. on your Facebook page. Yep, there's a link on the Facebook page. There's a link on the YouTube channel. There is... You have a lofty goal. 
big goal. What was it? Ten thousand. Ten thousand dollars. But I always, haven't donated yet. I've noticed. I noticed that. We're going to roll out a really exciting way that people will be able to donate involving our count. It's going to be exciting. Oh, carrot. Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. Ruminations from the red chairs. Thank you so much for joining me Thank and Chris, you. Yeah. Professor. If you care to join us another time for more videos like this, we go next week. Don't forget oh. to subscribe. Thanks so much for joining me and have a great day.